All right, let's now look at SOPs and rendering. So SOPs uh, is this uh, blue family, and um, they're dealing with all kinds of 3D geometry and particles and all that kind of stuff. Um, as I already explained uh, in the uh, operator families video, is that these are um, processed and computed on your CPU. So they're really not that fast and um, I wouldn't recommend doing too many um, like animations or operations uh, inside of the SOP uh, family. But you can still use them uh, in a lot of ways and I'm going to show you a few things um, what you can do with them. So I'm going to show you some basic shapes first. So there's I'm just going to drop all of these in here um, so we have them. So SOPs uh, have like circles, rectangles, a grid, which is uh, looks the same at first. I'm going to look at the difference in a second. We have a sphere, so like a, a ball, uh, a box, a tube, and a torus, but I'm going to delete that right away again because, uh, yeah, I'm not, never really using that. Um, yeah, all right. So we have these uh, these six most important um, subs here, I, w I would say. The so first one is a circle. And before I actually dive into them, what's important about subs uh, is that you can uh, turn this viewer active here as well, like on the others. But here you can now interact with this 3D geometry in there. So I can just, like with the middle mouse, I can uh, drag these around uh, with the um, with the left mouse, I mean. With the middle mouse, I can um, zoom in and out. And with the right mouse, I can like shift uh, up, up, down, right, right, left. So I can kind of have different looks on this. And with the H key, I can um, uh, center this again. And same with the other ones, of course. I can uh, interact with all of these. And you can already see there's some kind of um, light, lighting shading going on there, uh, which is the default kind of lighting. Uh, so you can just see your, your normals. So when I uh, turn compute normals off, you can't really you can't see that anymore. It's just like one constant color. All right, <coughs> um, you can uh, combine these. Um, no, let's let's look at the difference here first. So let, if we turn the viewer active on on both of these and zoom out a bit, we can uh, press W, and then you, then you'll see the difference between of them. So W just turns on the wireframe. I can also do that in the sphere, for example. So we can just see kind of the the bones of, uh, of what's going on. And the free in the geometry. Um, so, so on a rectangle, we really have just uh, four points, which we can see when we turn the points on. Uh, so right click here, display options, and turn the points on. You can also turn turn numbers on, and also like the vectors. Um, so when we look here, we just have four points, and we can't change that. So yeah, it's really just that. <laughs> and then on the grid, we can change how many rows and uh, columns we have. So that, that that's going to become useful quite a lot. Um, all right. So now we can actually merge these. So with the merge uh, stop, we can combine these together. So I'm going to make this like a bit bigger. And now you can see these are being like added together, and then we have this kind of GameCube <laughs> looking thing there. Um, I can also add this in here and um, make this bigger. All right, so here you can see you know, uh, two things. First being that whatever display options we um, set here, so like a wireframe on, or if we turn the, the points uh, on 
vectors, whatever. It's not going to be shown here, so that's really just operator specific. Um, and the second one, you know, just that these are added together here, and we can still like do the same operations again here as before. Um, so uh, what I would recommend generally, I, I changed the size here by uh, using this letter, like this value letter, um, and the same thing here. So just long clicking that and then changing it. Um, I would generally recommend using the transform uh, sop. So I'm just, uh, you know, right clicking in here, saying insert operator, and adding a transform, and same down here. And uh, you can just drag that onto that cable. So now I can, I just have this uniform scale, and it's a bit easier to work with that, I would say. And uh, I think it's uh, it's generally better to, to work with the transform, because uh, you just have a few more options, and it's a bit cleaner to work that way. <clears throat> okay, so we're achieving the same thing, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's mostly just cleaner. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let's set up a render network now. So to do that, like let's say we want to um, animate this or something, and then export this amazing graphic as a uh, an image or a, a video. So we can't just do that here. We um, we actually have to um, convert this to, to tops, so like to a 2D image, because this is actually like 3D data that we're just working here, we're working with here. Um, so we need to convert this to tops, and there isn't just this um, uh, sop to tops. We just have an OP, OP viewer. Forget about that. For now, um, what we need to do is use a uh, render setup. So, what we need to to uh, use for that is uh, at least two things, usually three things, and a render top. So these three things consist of a geo, um, a camera, and a light. So the geo is just kind of there to um, to get the data from the SOPs and then convert it to to tops and the camera is just there so we can um, we can look at it <laughs> pretty much that's, that's that's what we're doing with the camera and uh, the light um, yeah it's a light it's pretty <laughs> pretty uh, self-explanatory I think um, and then we're gonna need a render top so if I, if I just drop a render top in here I'm gonna add a null here and turn the display on so we can see it in the background. Um, we, we now see um, this thing from the... Like, no, we actually don't see this here. We see this Taurus. And that is because if we go into the Geo, we have this Taurus in here. Um, that's always there for default. I, I have no idea why, because I'm not really ever using a Taurus. <laughs> But um, we could also just put all of this network inside of here. That would also work. But um, what I prefer doing, just I don't know. I think it's like it's not really cleaner, but I've, it's um, better for me to see what's what's going on in the network. So what I usually do is actually not just drop it in there, geo, but right click on the end of uh, my sub network, and then add a geo from there. So what's that doing? Uh, is that it's just automatically creating an in and an out here and um, also what's important always that this render and this display is turned on so we can actually see it on the geo or it's actually see it because if we turn these off you can see um, that you can't see anything <laughs> so let's turn these on again or we could we could also technically just delete this and turn these on because we, we're not going to ever actually use an out here. Um, all right, so we just see this from the side right now. And to change that, 
we can either rotate the geometry, but I would generally recommend um, changing the camera's position. So there's many ways to do that again. Um, first, you can um, you can just change these parameters here. So just change the x value. So you can see it shifts around. Uh, change the, the y value as well. Um, that also works. And, you know, rotate this around. So we could like rotate this on the z value and, oops, then it's just kind of rotating that way. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, what, what I usually do, and there are again two ways to do this, is uh, to make the viewer active and then I can just drag this around. And the thing is, um, for the camera, this actually changes the camera's position. So as you can see here, these values are kind of like, they're, they're kind of messy. That's that's okay, I think. You can just um, adjust this position like that. On the geo, if you drag this around, nothing actually changes. Here, it's really just to for yourself to view this. And here, it's you, you're actually changing the camera's position. And same with the light, I can drag this around and then I'm actually changing the light's position. So that might be, might be a bit confusing in the beginning, and I don't completely know why that is, but uh, it's actually pretty useful. So the second way to do that is to use the split screen. So I'm going on the, clicking on this split uh, symbol there, and um, then we can go on geometry viewer here, and now we can uh, first just view our general geometry here. So the one that's in there, it is. Um, and also, what we can do is, I don't know, pick like some kind of position that we think is nice for the camera, and then save, save view to cam1. And then we're just taking that um, position. But um, yeah, you can definitely do that. But uh, I, I'm actually mostly I'm just kind of like going in here and quickly changing camera's position that way. Um, one last thing for the camera, not uh, two things. One is being uh, a null that we can use. So a null comp. Now I usually just make this smaller so you can see the difference. So w what the null really is, is just like a, a point in space uh, right now being set to zero on all axes. So I can go on the camera and then drag that onto the look at. So now the camera is always going to focus on this point. And when we change this translate, it's still going to look at, at that point. I'm actually going to right click on here, say reset all parameters, and then go back a bit. And now when I go up on the Y, oh, whoops, of course I need to still look at that. Um, then you can see, like, I'm I'm always looking at point zero. All right, so um, that that's actually super useful as well. I can also change the null, of course, and then I'm gonna look up or down. Uh, so we're just kind of moving the null around now instead. Um, yeah, so that that's that's one thing that's very useful, and another is going on the view. We can um, change the FOV angle here. So kind of this feel of you. Um, that's uh, kind of an easy way to just zoom in and out or uh, also kind of like it distorts the image at some point if we go to 140 or something. You can, yeah, you can barely see it on, on, on here, but it's going to like distort that a bit. And we can change to, uh, to different perspectives here. Um, we also have options for fog and everything, but uh, we don't need to look into that right now. Uh, on the light, we can also change the light's color. And I don't make this like blue or pink, any color you want. And um, what we can also do on the geo, for example, we can rotate the, the geometry here. So we don't actually need to rotate the camera for that. We could also just type abs dot, uh, abs time touch seconds or actually, let's just type in frame here, it's faster. And then we can see now this is being 
rotate it around the y-axis. Okay. Um, what I would generally recommend for SOPs is that you turn the the viewer off. Like um, the thing is, when you when you don't have them turned off, it needs to like the the computer needs to uh, render these uh, for you for you to view. So it's not like actually rendering it to tops or anything, but it's still like you know rendering it this and here uh, in a way. So you you can actually just see what's going on. So um, f for these graphics, this is no problem. But as soon as you have more complicated stuff happening in there then uh, your frame rate is going to drop pretty fast and you don't want that. So you can just uh, click on that and then turns uh, off the viewers. And the thing is, if you if you click on the viewer, uh, on the viewer active here, you can still interact with it. So um, yeah, uh, it's, it's all right. It's like it, it doesn't take that away or anything, but it, it makes a lot of sense in, in the SOP world. All right, <clears throat> so um, what we can do now is uh, change, like, let's actually turn this on so we can see it for a second, and uh, turn the wireframe off. I don't want to see the points on here. And also, I want this to lay flat, so I can change this to ZX plane. So now it's like lying there flat on the floor. And what I can do now is use a Connect in this to noise. So noise is always uh, fun, um, and automatically, like this is uh, always a def a default set to like um, to animate to animation. We can make this slower maybe, uh, and we can just put that in here instead. And what we also need to do is because um, this doesn't have normals anymore. What we also need to do is to insert an attribute create and then turn on the compute normals. And um, let's actually zoom in here and not have this rotate anymore. And now you can see um, we have this kind of cloth looking like shape. Uh, we can maybe make these rows and columns a bit higher so it's like smoother. And as you can see now, when I turn this up to like 300 by 300, this frame rate drops down to like 13 FPS. Um, and this doesn't actually affect that much because it's just so ha it still has to like compute this um, to be rendered out. So um, I wouldn't go too high with these. Um, so. Yeah, it's still not <laughs> not running smooth. So as you can see, um, as soon as you do animation um, in uh, in in the SOP world with with too many vertices, so then then it's gonna it's gonna drop your frame rate very quickly. If we turned on um, I turned off the animation, we can probably go a lot higher. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't need to recompute everything constantly. Okay, so that's one thing. Obviously, you can like change the, the period here and um, roughness. So this is also kind of this, the same thing as in the top and chop world. Um, and you can kind of see how this is creating a sort of landscape. Um, yeah, that, that's like, it's one way to do it with this noise in here. Uh, when we uh, get to the next video, we're going to look at a different way to do this. And I think that's uh, the, the better way, way, actually. But still, it's uh, fun to, to play with this. All right. Um, OK, two more things. Um, I'm going to use a sphere now. And we're now going to look at particles. So I'm going to right click on here, say disconnect, and add a particle sop here. And then I'm just going to drop that in here. All right, so you can't see uh, much, and that's uh, that's totally all right. Um, 
for us to see something, we're going to need a material. Uh, and I'm just going to use a... We don't need to understand this. I'm just going to do this so we can see them. Just using a point sprite on here. And um, also change the number of particles that we can see. And I'm going to add a transform top here. And change the alpha to 1 and turn the comb over background color on so we can maybe see this a bit better. And also change the scale here. There we go. Okay, something like that. Okay, you, you don't need to like do this or understand this. Okay, what we want to look at is the, the particles here. Um, so the particles. Uh, you can't just drop them in here and they're going to create something. They always need some kind of, how are they calling this, particle source. Um, so some kind of geometry that everything is based on. So what this is doing is for every frame it's creating one particle at one position. Um, so if we just like kind of go through here, it's like creating all of these one after the other. Um, and yeah, that, that I, I don't I don't know why that actually is. Uh, I think it's kind of, like I'm generally not a huge fan of particles anymore. It's it's really fun to play with that in the beginning. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not it's not perfect. <laughs> but anyways, uh, if we look at these points here and actually also look at the vectors. Um, we can see two things. Um, one being that the particles are always created at every point uh, that we can see here. You probably can't see that very well. But we have all these um, blue points there. And for every point uh, uh, is a particle being created. And we also have like these vectors. And uh, if we turn off compute normals, then um, you can see they're not moving anymore because they're not like because the particles are based on these uh, on the normals. So if we turn it on again, then it's kind of moving again. Um, I'm going to turn it off. We can also change the, the number of uh, rows and columns. This isn't going to affect how many particles we're going to see, but just how many are going to be created uh, or how many positions there are to to have particles created from. Hope that makes sense. Uh, actually looks pretty cool <laughs> anyways um, we can also like and this is the most fun about particles you can um, turn the tu turbulence uh, on here and then um, you can see this kind of organic movement happening there um, and to to kind of get rid of this uh, that uh, of the fact that you can see that these are all created one after the other. You can add a sort. And on the sort, you can change the point sort to random. And now you can't really see that anymore. Now it's just uh, looking more like particles, you know. So the thing is with particles on the sub world, because they're all rendered on the GPU or computed, uh, you, can, you can't really go high with particles. Because as you can see now, this frame rate drops to 20, 25. Um, there, are, there are there are other ways to create particles with like tops and instancing. But I'm, we're not going to look at that now. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit sad <laughs> that they don't have this right now, because this kind of th that they don't have an easy way, I'd say, to just to create particles. I said, or I guess it's sad that this particle thing isn't on the in the top world. Maybe they're gonna add that at some point. Um, yeah, just just play around with these parameters. Uh, you can still have fun with this for sure. <laughs> I, I don't want to discourage you to have fun with this. And um, yeah, all right. So that's one thing. And the last thing is that you can also import uh, files. So you can, for example, just drop an FBX here. And it's always going to have this uh, default touch designer um, thing going on there. And uh, you can uh, use other files as well. Also, um, also, 
you can uh, you can just drag and drop obj files in here uh, if you want to do that and then use that as a different source uh, for for particles for example or just uh, you can just drop them in here and then connect them like any other sop and uh, there's also the option to import usd files here so you already have this kind of landscape going on here um, so you have some more uh, options in here to uh, to play animations and stuff but I haven't worked with that all right <coughs> um, I think that's it for SOPs so generally uh, like this this might have sounded like uh, like I'm, I don't think very highly of SOPs <laughs> uh, in a way I don't but you can really definitely use them in a great way so you can use them in combination with materials and that makes them very powerful and you can use them as as bases for for other, for other things and we're going to look at instancing and in instancing sops are also very uh very important powerful all right so just have a look through all of these different operators and um now we're going to look at materials which is going to be more fun now all right see you then